This is my brand new espresso machine, the La Marzocco Linnea Mini. And I won this machine for just $21.25. So I actually won this machine from an Instagram raffle held by Sprudge. Not too long ago, they made an Instagram post promoting their brand new book, But First Coffee, a guide to brewing from the kitchen to the bar. And I participated in this raffle because A, I like interesting cookbooks or coffee books, and B, chance for a free Linnea Mini. Never did I imagine I'd actually win it. So short story short, that's how a $20 book purchase won me this $7,000 espresso machine. And by the way, it's a genuinely great book. I'd recommend checking it out, as well as some other great coffee books that I've read that I'll leave links to in the description down below. So in this video, I'm going to break down the unboxing experience, my first impressions, the customization and mods that I've chosen, and what I'm planning to do, and also where do we go from here. So starting with the unboxing experience. The freight forwarding company called me about a day in advance to schedule a drop-off time slot. And on the day of, I got a call about 30 minutes prior to the drop-off to ensure that I was going to be around to pick it up. I was able to capture some POV footage here with my sunglasses of what that process looked like. And honestly, holy f this guy kind of just picked up the entire machine off the back of the truck super effortlessly. From there, I wheeled it up into my apartment and the unboxing experience was actually really, really smooth. The entire box came on a mini wooden pallet and you just sort of cut the straps off and lift the top off to reveal the machine and accessories. The machine itself was very well packaged with plenty of cardboard components protecting it. And the machine is definitely heavy. I think it's in the range of 60 to 70 pounds. So I would recommend having somebody help here just to be on the safe side. And you know, I immediately went to remove those heat warning stickers on the machine. Unfortunately, the back sticker did leave a ton of residue, which I did attempt to remove some Scotch-Brite, which turned out to be a not so great solution since it kind of scuffed up the stainless steel uh, back panel, but it's fine. Setting it up was very straightforward, basically plug and play. I downloaded the La Marzocco home app and it fairly quickly found my machine. From there, I was able to set things up like auto on off and standby schedules and even have control over the Akaya brew by weight scale, but more on the scale in a separate video. In the accessories box, I did find the stock components that came with the machine, including an interestingly convex tamper. But now let's talk about the customizations. From La Marzocco directly, I opted for the Linnea Mini with the white panels for a modern look that blends in with the overall setup. I also opted in for the Performance Touch Steam Wand, Walnut Accents, and the Akaya Brew by White Scale, and was even graciously offered the new La Marzocco Pico, which isn't here quite yet. And this machine is absolutely stunning. It really is unlike any other of those chrome box espresso machines out there. The smooth gloss white panels make it feel understated and fit better into a home environment than any chrome box could. There's not a lot that I can complain about visually here. I love the machine I received with all these accents, but there are still just a few more things I'm going to modify or potentially replace. First, I'll be picking up the drain tray modified for an integrated Akaya Lunar Scale. This should allow me to fit larger mugs in what is already a relatively confined space under the group head. And combined with the La Marzocco edition of the Akaya Lunar, which can now communicate with the Linnea Mini itself for a gravimetric measuring output, and you've now got functionality of something like, say, the GS3 AV, but even more accurate since it's not measuring in volume. And don't worry, I will have a separate review of the Brew by Weight Lunar on the channel, depending on when you're watching this video. And obviously, I love wood accents, but I've got a few too many different types of wood and materials going on right now, and maybe want to start to simplify this. And because I've already got this big oak wood husky top and this new lighter wood veneer shelf unit from Ikea, I've been looking around at the oak timber kit with the brass accents from Spect Designs. Spect makes some incredibly beautiful machines, but with that comes a not so beautiful looking price tag, so opting for their timber kit may, at the very least, be a nice way to customize my machine further. This is certainly a future consideration item, and for now I'm going to stick to enjoying the gorgeous wall pieces. And this is really just the beginning of cosmetic modifications for the machine. There are other functional mods from integrated shot timers on the paddle, moving the knobs to becoming levers on the sides, needle valve mods for better pre-infusion button performance, and way, way more. Will I end up doing some of these more complex functional mods? Maybe, but for now I'm going to stick with the base functionality. 
Now, beyond the cosmetics, this machine has certainly had a little bit of a learning curve to it that I've had to adjust for. Firstly, steam power is absolutely insane. Like within seconds, I've gone from cold milk to thick, frothy foam. It's definitely going to take some practice to get back to steaming for latte art quality milk. Second, this machine is big, but not like outrageously so. I guess it's suiting of the mini name. It's a lot deeper than any machine I've tried to date, so if you are in the market for a machine like this, just be sure that your countertop or bar is deep enough to account for it. And finally, the machine brews excellent espresso, as you'd expect. It is quite a different profile from what I've grown accustomed to with the lever profile of the Profitech Pro 800, or even the flow controllable profiling with the Lilith Bianca. It almost feels like this kind of machine is built to do one thing and do it excellently, and that's pull a fantastic traditional 9-bar style shot of espresso. Perfect for milky drinks, but for straight espresso, I found more leeway with the lever machine and profile for my preferences. But maybe that's just a matter of time, as this is of course a first impressions video. You can expect a full review once I get a little more time with this Italian espresso machine. So quickly here, let's talk about the cost. And yes, I know I got this for free as I had mentioned at the start, but I have to consider this machine for what its price would be otherwise. For the base machine from La Marzocco, the mini would be about $6,000. With the upgraded Steam One and Wallet Accents that I've got here, you're looking at a $7,300 configuration. Not to mention a new version of the Akaya Lunar, which is kind of weird that despite all the app connectivity that the old models have, they couldn't simply give it a little firmware update, and that would run you an additional $400. In total, this current setup would cost, I imagine, close to about $8,000 after shipping and taxes, which is a lot of money. And whether or not it's worth that amount, I'm going to save for my full review in the future. Now, what I will be more interested in is the cost of ownership over the course of the next year and beyond, which is something I'll be sure to update here on the channel as well. So what's next? For my morning ritual of brewing a rich, chocolatey, and nutty shot of espresso to blend with beautifully silky sweet milk, I'm really looking no further than a classic La Marzocco Linnea Mini. But that's certainly not the end of machine reviews here on the channel, and that's certainly not to say that there are possibly better machines for lesser or equal value than this machine I have here. All that to say that you can continue to expect plenty of coffee and espresso machines, grinders, and gadget reviews from me, plus written versions on my website if that's more your speed. So anyways, thank you so much for watching, and be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.